Hello fellow fingerboarders, it's Chris Daniels here, aka CD Play Zero, and today, this is the inaugural episode of our How to Film Fingerboarding series. Over the course of this series, I will share some tips on how you can improve your own fingerboard edits. Not only that, but you can leverage these tips to turn filmmaking and video editing into a hobby. There were quite a few fingerboarders out there who became professionals in filming including FFI founder Nate Thompson, who is an award-winning cinematographer and owner of multiple film-related enterprises. How cool is that? This episode will cover my own filming setup as well as how to light a scene. You see, lighting is one of the most important components of filming. Remember, the camera is just a device that captures light. By filming in poorly lit scenarios, we are depriving the camera of its most important element. When we light poorly, we make it so much more difficult for ourselves to make something that looks visually pleasing. Okay, so let's take a look at some lighting setups and the resulting footie. But before we jump in, please be sure to hit that like button and leave a little comment below about what you are currently using to film your fingerboarding with. I know some of you may think you need to have an expensive camera to have crazy content. I think it's far more important to focus on the lighting as well as the camera placement rather than the camera itself. Back in 2009, I released a handful of videos where I really took time to explore lighting. The camera I used at the time was a Panasonic GS120. It might sound expensive, but this camera was the only 3CCD camera that I could buy at the time because it was under $300. So the camera itself was nothing special, but here's the resulting footage. So how did I make it look so good given that the camera itself wasn't that good? I made sure that the lighting was dramatic. Here's the thing, I had a single floor light. This type of lighting is called low key lighting, which is where you have a single light source that's used. It provides a high contrast and a dramatic effect on the image itself. This is the style of lighting that I used in the footage back in 2009. The important thing when creating a film is to use your eyes. Take a bit of time to look at that viewfinder, adjust the camera placement, or maybe even the light placement. Go back to your viewfinder and look. If you need to make more adjustments, then do it really quick and go back to the viewfinder. Think about all the tricks you want to film. Where does the camera placement work best in that scenario? That little bit of time you spend before you film goes a long way after. It will ensure that you come up with a shot that is beautiful and has a big dramatic impact on the viewers. Now let's take a look at my setup. I use a Manfrotto 290 tripod, which is what I use to stabilize the camera when filming. I have a Fotix Nuada P, which is an on-camera light that I use mainly for on-the-go fingerboarding, but it actually works as a really good key light for filming on the table itself. It's dimmable and allows me to change the color temperature of the light. Next up, I have the Aperture MT Pro. This is a fantastic light. I just purchased it. It's fully dimmable and allows the ability to control color. It also has some wild RGB effects. I have not fully explored this light's capabilities, but I am excited to share this with you and it's going to make some really fun footage. Here is one of my favorite things that I own. It's my Edelkrone Slider Pro with a flex head. This baby allows me to have smooth, controlled camera movement automatically. I can control the device with my phone, set it up to repeat indefinitely which means that I can focus on fingerboarding while this device provides all that extra dimension from the camera movement. And lastly, we have the camera itself, which is my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. This is the camera that I use. It's overkill for fingerboarding, let me be clear. But I also use it for purposes outside of fingerboarding as well. I have an entire rig built out 
and it includes a road shotgun mic, Samsung T7 solid state drive, which is where I can save footage to, and a massive V-mount battery. I'm also filming with a 25 millimeter Panasonic lens, as I really like the depth of field it provides. I can tell you that this camera is awesome and fantastic, but you don't need it. You could take the lights that I have from here and then use your phone and have a beautiful shot because to me the lighting actually is much more important than the camera itself. Again guys, I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. If you want to watch more content like this, be sure to check out my History of Fingerboarding playlist. This playlist has over two hours of fingerboard content and I'm sure you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it, learning about all the old history of fingerboarding. Have a great day and have fun fingerboarding guys.